You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Thanks for listening today. Thanks for uh, tuning in every Tuesday or whenever you listen to your uh, podcasts. How many podcasts can you listen to? At once? <laughs> well, not at once, <laughs> but, uh, but, but look, thanks for listening to mine. Um, if you enjoy this interview with Ryan Kelly, um, I urge you to write a review, follow us, and subscribe. Um, at Inside You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook, at Inside You Pod on the Twitter. We really appreciate it. And uh, we've got tons of merch on the Inside of You online store. Uh, new sorority boy statues. <laughs> uh, there's only three uh, left already. Um, zip ups, Inside of You zip ups, uh, Lexmas from Smallville scripts, tons of stuff. Go to the Inside of You online store, get your merch now. Um, and also join Patreon if you want to support the podcast like many do. At the end of this podcast, we read all the top tier names that are patrons. And they get lots of uh, perks like uh, Zoom with me here and there and uh, boxes and notes and uh, YouTubes and a bunch of stuff. So go to patreon.com slash inside to support the podcast. And without you, we couldn't do it. And I appreciate it. I'll send you a message back. I will. I always do. I'm also on the cameo and uh, my band Sunspin. Uh, we uh, we just played a show and it was awesome. And thanks for coming out. You can go to sunspin.com for merch to book the band, Zooms, all that stuff. So it's a lot of fun. And also listen to uh, Talkville, my other podcast with Tom Willing and Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And inside of you live podcast. Yes, live podcast in Los Angeles, Regent Theater. 7 p.m. Actually, earlier, if you get a meet and greet with me and Zach Levi. Yes, Zach Levi. He's the guest. And live podcast at the Regent Theater, 7 p.m., October 11th, Wednesday. Ryan will be there. I will, of course, be there. It's going to be so much fun. I'm nervous. I'm excited. Uh, I hope you come and join and support the podcast like you always do. And uh, if you can get out to L.A., it's going to be a freaking show, man. Ryan, you, uh, you doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah, maybe I should interview you one day. Sure. What would that be like? Going to get inside of me? I don't know. You you got you get along with your family. You're you know you seem like you're mentally sound. You know you've got. A, I got darkness. Do you? Man, I got. Hey I, man, I, I can share my darkness. Hey man, I can get dark. You want to get dark? You want to get dark? You wanna get dark? Right, let's get I'll dark. Get man. dark if you want to get dark. Oh yeah, we can get dark. I'll go jet dark. Oh yeah. Fucking right. We'll go darker than. Yeah, uh, I'll go for uh, a rip wait, after. We'll go winter in Alberta. We'll get so dark, we'll fucking get a, go for a rip after. Go for a rip, you always are. Going for a rip. Make sure I got enough loonies and toonies, and we're in my toque when we go for a rip. It's cold back there in Saskatchewan. This is what would happen if you interview me. This is the uh, <laughs> would You just would not listen this. to this. All right, listen, we got a great podcast for you. Uh, Ryan Kelly, um, he's had a terrific career, um, and it started really on Smallville. And he was on the show a few times, and we talk about that. And we talk about life and he opens up and um, he's got a big following. Such a sweet guy. It was so nice having him here. I think you're really going to enjoy this one. So let's get inside of Ryan Kelly. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hey folks, wanted to highlight something important before today's episode. In case you weren't aware, myself and many of the guests are on strike alongside SAG, AFTRA, and WGA. Today's episode and any we air before the strike ends were recorded before it began. So this is just a heads up in relation to some for the topics we may discuss. If you want more info on the strike, visit SAG After Strike. Dot org. Now let's get into it. It's it's crazy looking at you <laughs> because last time I saw you, how old were you when you did Smallville? Everything I'm gonna say, I'm always off a little bit. My mom would be like, "Ryan, that's not even true." Uh, so let's say I think I was 16 the first time, the first season. 16? And then Are you sure you were that old? Maybe I was 15. I mean, also I I looked like you looked young. You were like me, late toddler. bloomer. Yes. So late that's bloomer. another thing that was probably throwing you too <laughs> man i mean i just remember and i remember thinking i'm not just saying this but i i think i told you i don't know if you even remember but i was i remember it was just saying you're really good you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna work i remember telling your mom 
I was like, this kid's good. You were well behaved on set. I don't know if she beat you. Yes. I don't know what, <laughs> what happened, but uh, it was just like, you know, when you watch those episodes, those were the be- the two great episodes that you were in. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. Right, Ryan? Ryan's? Yeah. Oh, no, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's had to watch them because yeah. he does Talkville as well with Welling. And um, what do you what do you remember? Just like going back, like, what do you remember? I mean, 15, you're not that young. No. So you probably remember a bit. Uh, you worked a ton I, I since. Remember, I, I remember, I mean, again, like I said, my memory is terrible. So... Um, it's all those roids, man, with all your bulk, right? (laughs) Uh, it's drop, you know, living in Hollywood drugs being dropped on your head. (laughs) Um, but, uh, what I, what I do remember is Smallville was the first, like it changed my life in the sense of that was, I had been acting when I was younger, um, just kind of something my parents made me do. And I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but it was definitely like not forced, but like if I, made an obligation to something mom was like well no you have to do this right you have to go to this audition you said you would um and i took to it i have a bunch of siblings they didn't like it as much i kind of loved it and i loved being out of school i loved yeah acting as much as i did sports and smallville was the first time that i saw adults doing it for a living like it clicked in my head i was like wait i remember you guys were, um especially the second season you guys were going through like talking to each other about contract negotiations i remember <laughs> you thinking, remember like, that a little bit yeah and i remember thinking like wow it'd be so cool one day if i could do that um but the first one for sure i was like wait you guys do this for a living like you don't do anything like you didn't this is what you do you know and you guys are like yeah <laughs> so yeah. that was the first time it clicked in my head and then that it, it's a good thing and a bad thing my mom probably wishes that never happened because that was when i made in my head i was like oh I'm going to lie to my parents and tell them I'm applying for college and not apply to college. And then I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. That's what you thought at that age, right? When you were on set, that so, was somehow the, it clicked in. Dude, that was the first, for sure. Smallville was like, where I was like, oh, I, I, I want to do this too. Well, how do I, my parents are going to make me go to college. How do I, oh, I'll just lie to them. And then, you know. Did you, did you like doing it? Did you like acting? I loved it. You I, loved I it. loved it. I loved being on set. Like that part was still to this day is my favorite thing ever. You love, um, you would love the, pro- the process. I, yes, of making the art itself. You know, as you get older, the audition part is you want to beat you your head against walls. You still audition a lot? Yeah, here and there. You know, I mean, it's 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 the name of the game. Getting back to, you know, like right now, I'm not currently working on anything. So it's getting back to the grind, the grind, which, putting yourself on tape, not going in anymore. Right. <laughs> well, that part's at first was kind of tough. You know, like I do like the in-person gratification of like seeing some human respond to your work. However, living in Los Angeles, now that I've kind of gotten over that, I'm like, dude, I do actually not like sitting in traffic for an hour, an hour and a half. Like if you have an audition down in Raleigh Studios in Santa Monica, I live in the Valley, you know, right. it's an hour and a half coming back on a Friday. I'd but now just... you could just like stick your lines wherever yeah. and you don't have to memorize them when you go to an audition, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, how yeah, I, yeah. that's how I look. You know, that's how I look at it, Ryan. <laughs> right here, right here. How's my eye line? Yeah. It doesn't look like I'm looking at my lines. All right, yeah, good. We're good. I, Roll. I definitely do like certain ports where like I'll put like uh, post-its yeah. of like a line that I, or a word I can't remember and I'll glance at it and be like, oh yeah. Yeah. Now you said your parents didn't want you to get into this or they did? They did, but I don't, they wanted me to, I mean, for sure, like every parent wanted me to go to college and then. And then if this was something I wanted to pursue, they they would have liked me to have a, like a backup plan or, or a degree to fall back on, right? Yeah, but you were like, something I, I read, or is it true about like your neighbors were going for an audition for an, to meet an agent? So mm-hmm. you're like, let's do that. And all of the, your siblings, you all went? Yeah, we did like a like a one of those showcase type Who things. Who decided to do that? Whose idea was that? I'm assuming my mom. You know, like, so I've, so the story is I have 14 siblings, right? Whoa, a, whoa, whoa. I, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. You have 14 siblings. Are they all from the same? The youngest nine are adopted from all over the world. Um, wow. Yeah. So it was a way to, I think, I mean, my, like get a head start on paying off college. Cause there's no way my parents were going to pay for 15 kids. Hold on. Hold on. I mean, it's, I, I hate having in my calendar going, oh, I got to send my brother something. Oh, I got to send my, uh, you know, I got to call my sister. You got to call 15 people. I mean, if you were to talk to my 13. siblings, I'm the worst. 13. No, 14. I'm 14. One we're both wrong. Right. right. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I, don't, I, don't, I don't call in. I mean, I'm the worst. I, I The only, th- I know my birthday and I know my older brother's birthday because he's one day after me. The rest of that, I get u- updates from my sisters. Like, Really? Hey, you don't know anybody's birthday? No. not I don't know. You my, know your mom's, I bet. Nope. You don't know your dad's? Nope. I mean, they're going to listen to this and. They probably they know this. They know I don't. I'm I'm the worst at that stuff. I'm so bad at that. Are you bad at remembering, or memorizing? 
Um, I'm no. So because of acting, I think I'm really good at memorizing things for a short period of time and then gone. You know, like I, if you made me learn a script, I could learn that real quick. But then if you asked me three weeks from now, I wouldn't have a clue. I'd be like, what? Yeah, I understand. You that. know, like it's just been trained in my head to like learn things. Like I always did good on tests because I would cram study for them. And then, the, you know, if there was ever like a recap or a surprise test, oh, I was failing that because I was like, wait, what? So you do well in school. Uh, I did when I was younger. Right. So five years old, you guys all go. How many do you go to this audition? I don't. That's a good question. I need to actually a, a handful of us. A handful of you. Yeah. And they so you did a showcase something. Yeah. Like, you know, one of those like looking for uh young talented, you know, uh, there's a bunch right. of names I can't even remember. But, you know, how many um, did they choose? Uh, or how many did they? So that's an, you know what? These are great questions. <laughs> I, I, if I if I start just answering them, I'm gonna be like, I'm but, just but it pulling started. It, out my butt. it started you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what started it all. Yeah, and then also like I was definitely younger, and my older siblings were same sort of thing. Looked younger, mature. My parents, you know, my mom ruled with an iron fist. So like, you know, we we listened to her. Like, my mom's a great mom. Like I, we like you would see kids on set crying or like being disobedient, running around. Be, that was never us. We would listen. If my mom said like, "Hey, you're gonna act like this. Be mature. Don't embarrass us." We did that. Why did you listen to her? Uh, my mom. I don't know. It's just the way my but mom was. She was she tough, tough love. Yes, but no. I mean, like, was yes, she a spanker? Yes. I definitely got spanked. We we didn't get beaten, but I got yeah, spanked. Yeah, you know? I yeah. got spanked. Yeah, but, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I think this whole world now, it's like, you know. What oh, do you I think? want to spank my kids for sure. Yeah, Ryan? Uh, no, I didn't. I, no, I was definitely afraid of like breaking the rules, so I never did. Yeah, I, I mean, Would look, you have gotten spanked? No. Oh. Uh, did I get? No. no. All, all I could say is I'm not talking about beating your kids like you're saying. I'm just saying like a little smack on the ass yeah, oh, saying, yeah, yeah. hey, don't. I've told you three times. Yeah. You and, know, to wake up. My dad in the mall sometimes I'd be oh, yeah, oh, 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 and like he go stop that stop that and then he'd grab my arm and go ah. yeah you no know, I just be like, honestly oh, I was more scared of my mom's look like, you know that look like I was scared of say- my mom my dad's voice yeah I'm not gonna tell you again <laughs> you understand I think that's where I channeled some of the Lex Luthor stuff nice I did people said where where do you where does do you, where do you get that you're kind of a goofy guy I'm like it's easy just channel my dad yeah you know and I I, I hear. You know, even a lot of people do that. Um, I don't know if Farley, if I heard this or maybe it's wrong, but like Chris Farley would, uh, you know, he like his Matt Foley, there's a essence of his father and they're like, listen to me for God. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was like that essence. I think mean, Napoleon Dynamite John, that was just like him and his brothers. They were always like, gosh, you're stupid. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, you get sort of characteristics from your friends and family for sure yeah or experiences well where did you get that i noticed like even when you did small but we'll get into teen wolf and all the stuff and the movie and you've done tons of things you work with sigourney weaver you've worked with a lot of great people clint eastwood right yeah i can't i mean i can't that's crazy but what were you gonna say that's a funny story i mean most of the stuff i did with him got cut anyway so that's yeah, funny it, i'm about was, to do a, a movie coming out. <laughs> a lot of my stuff got cut. how do you deal with that by the way how do you deal with getting cut out or failure uh well the key to something for for me like unless i've seen it or i know like i always downplay everything you know like i've had friends who make a huge deal about something especially if they're newer you know like if they haven't worked as much and then they get something and they're super excited about it and then it's like their friends and family or you go to this premiere and then you don't find out it's cut till till it comes and then you look from in my opinion you know you it's 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 an ego you're like what why did that so i just never play up anything to where i'm just like ah, i don't know i mean you know we'll see and yeah when, i do the same yeah. thing and then I, when <laughs> and then I, when i'm cut i'm like yeah i don't you know i did more but i don't really know what see, happened i think that is a um classless act on the behalf of directors or producers not to call the actor who had a decent look if you had three lines and they're not in the movie you don't have to call this person no i de- mine was definitely small it was it was a handful of scenes and and it, no, it wasn't like yes. I, I understand what you're saying. No, they didn't. They didn't owe me a call. It was such a massive movie, and and what I had, and what they. It was a it was a really cool thing, which is why I did it. But then what I, most of the cool stuff that I did didn't, didn't make it. Rowdy Roddy Piper did this movie that was not good, and he was uh, like you know he had a scene in the movie, and he came to the premiere with his and they cut kids, it. and he oh. no one told him he wasn't in the movie. See, that's messed up. And I was like, and afterwards, I he goes, "Hey man, you're funny," and I go. Hey, I I can't believe your stuff wasn't in there. He's like, yeah, bud. He was so cool. He taught me the sleeper hold. Yeah, I go. I, I said, hey, look, does the sleeper hold really work, Rowdy? Rowdy, Piper. And he looked at me and goes, come here. I'm going to show you something. 
And you just want to grab it right here. Grab put your arm around the neck. The other arm goes this way. I don't need a pull here or something. And I just was, I was out and he oh, caught me. Yeah. And he goes, now you're going to do it to me. And I go, no, oh, I can't, I can't hold you up. He goes, no, you'll be all right. Just make sure I don't fall, hit the ground. Anybody could do the sleeper hold. Did you make him pass out? And I made him pass out because <laughs> he showed me how to do it. And he goes like this. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. He goes, yeah, see you there. And he was, it was, it was, it was trippy, but yeah, that's, that's a lousy thing to do is not, is not tell someone with such a name, especially well, that. Yeah. And you especially know. if you're going to bring your family, like, ugh. yeah. Inside of you is brought to you by Neurohacker. Stay here folks, because this stuff works. Hear me out. I love taking this stuff. Qualia mind from Neurohacker. Okay. I feel sharper taking this every five days a week I take this I take one pill and I feel sharper I have energy I feel like I could combine sentences I could create long sentences um from help with my daily mental performance and help supporting my long-term brain health neurohackers quality of mind is indispensable to me uh, it's so cool to take a product where you don't have to wonder if it's working because I noticed a difference immediately, unlike a lot of products. In fact, I just got this other product for something else, and they're like, oh, ex expect three to six months. I'm like, well, anything could happen in three to six months. I could be feeling better because I just feel better. But uh, this stuff in just days, <laughs> I noticed my focus, my mood, um, my willpower to get things done, get her done. Our sponsor, Neurohacker, combines 28 of some of the most research-backed nootropic ingredients on Earth into an ultimate brain fuel formula, Qualia Mind, and it's been changing people's lives for years now, and I'm here to tell you it works. The formula is non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, and the ingredients are meant to complement one another, factoring in each ingredient's effect on supporting mental clarity. Yeah, Ryan, it's also backed by a 100-day money guarantee. Money-back guarantee. I mean, whenever they have a money back guarantee, you know they know that their product is good. You have almost three months to try Neurohackers Call Your Mind at no financial risk and decide for yourself. And then you can say, Rosenbaum, you did it. You're right. See what one of the best brain fuel formulas on earth can do for your mindset. Go to neurohacker.com slash IOU for $100 off. And as a listener of Inside of You, use code IOU at checkout for an extra 15% off your first purchase. That's neurohacker.com slash IOU to try Qualia Mind with code IOU to experience life-changing mental performance. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The products and statements are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So your mom was sort of that look, you know, she, yeah. was, she was a disciplinarian, but you guys listened. You listened, you were respectful. But with 13 kids, it had to get kind of, Rowdy. No, never. Rowdy. I mean, like, people think like, you know, like cheaper by the dozen. You know, I was just mayhem. No, that mm -hmm. was never my house. My parents, uh, my mom, I don't know. Just, I, I think, it, like in life, like if you look at people that you meet that have issues or bad people, you know, like it all stems from parenting. So if you just are good parents, more often than not, your kids are going to be good. But it's just, yeah, but how about you have 13 kids? How do you pay attention to all 13 and help them with their studies? I mean, I can't be all right, your algebra. All right, next one. <laughs> Here's science. Don't know anything about it. Kelsey, move along. John, here we go. For sure. I mean, I'm sure there's some of that. I mean, that's stuff that I think about now. Like, you know, I'm in my later 30s, so I can't imagine what my parents had to go through. But you just, we kind of just did it ourselves. And if we had questions, they would help us. But sometimes sometimes I'm sure they couldn't or weren't as... My dad was pretty good at math. But if he wasn't around, you know, like my mom's like me, we're not good at math. So get a tutor. Get a <laughs> figure tutor. Figure it out. Yeah. Go to the teacher. Ask for help. You know, do, you know, figure this out yourself. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. It's just... It's just yeah, it's got to be tough. Like with all those kids, it just, it just, I, I think about it and it's just like, I think, you know, how I didn't get any attention growing up. And I'm like, God, I can't imagine with 13 well, kids. Well, on top of not... I mean... The best thing about having so many kids is my mom had built-in babysitters. So also, like, if I wasn't getting affection from my parents, I was getting it from my siblings. You know, I was always around my siblings. Oh, I always had babysitter. Friend. <laughs> no, we never had babysitters. <laughs> babysitters were my siblings. Oh. And sometimes that was good, and sometimes it was bad. Yeah. You know, like, I had a, one of my sisters was was a tough babysitter. 
Really? I mean, I was a brat, so I, you know, she was tough on she'd me for beat reasons. You up, but huh? <laughs> no, I'd just get sent to bed immediately. And you'd listen. <laughs> I had to, or she'd call my mom, and then she's right and I'm wrong. You know? Did you did you ever deal with any like you know gr- growing up and like getting into the acting world? Did you ever deal with any like anxiety and your nerves, or were you just a confident kid because of your you know product of your own environment being you know? Uh, I mean, I, having good parents. I have nerves all. I mean, for everything you get, you have nerves going in. You know, you you want to be perfect. Or you want to, you know, like you put you in, can't be I know you can't, but I you know, know, you've put in all this work, especially on certain auditions. Like that's the thing you try not to care. I mean, that's something I've learned is to not care about auditions. I mean, obviously I care about them, but to the, the second you walk out, you know, that thing of just like, forget about it. If throw it's meant paper, to be, throw it's the meant sides to be. away. And you know, that's easier said than done. There's definitely some auditions where you're like, mm, come on, I really, you know, like you can't not. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's always nervous. There's always, I, I get nervous for every audition I go on, even just like, but it's nerves of excitement more often than not because I have put in the work and I'm ready for the audition. The, the, the nerves that would kill me is if like you just gave, like I hate cold reads. So like that terrifies me or used to terrify me when, when I was younger. You mean just reading off the script? I hate. Just, you or like, you just, haven't learned them, just read yeah, the scene. Just like, or like, you know, like sometimes like what my nightmare is going in on audition, doing really good on a, on a, like a, the, the, the character you're auditioning for and then being like, you know what? You're fantastic, but you're not right for this role. Here's this one. And then even though they know, I always think in my head, I'm like the casting director knows and hopefully they relay that to whoever's watching, but I'm competing now against kids who've had a week to, to memorize this stuff and I'm hoping they convey that, but maybe not. And then when someone well, watches it, that's not your like, fault. I know, I know, but, but you, I, I know what you you're know, saying. Like someone's watching them, they're like, yeah. oh, that kid's, he didn't, he didn't he take didn't the time prepare. to memorize. Yeah, he's just reading it. No, and that's like, that gives me crazy. Tell. I hope, I don't know. Well, they have to. They go, well, why is this guy reading off the script? You, know, like, you, you say that, but I don't. it's the same thing when you send an audition tape. Like, are they actually watching this? I don't know. Well, Clint Eastwood, <laughs> okay. he casts off tape. I hope. He casts off tape. He casts me off tape. All right. Did you audition for Clint or did you cast off tape? Uh, I, no, it was for a uh, casting director. And I, I actually auditioned for a different role. And then they're like, same sort of thing where they're like, dude, that was, you're fantastic. You're not. We don't think you're right for this, but hey, there's this smaller role, but it's actually really powerful. And it's what movie? Uh, Letters of Iwo Jima. Right. So there, there's this role that's like super cool and like it's going to paint this terrible thing about war and we think you could crush it. You're a Marine. Uh, yeah. And and originally I was going to have this like insane dying death scene. Like, you know, again, it's someone looking like the whole point was just showing how awful it is. And like, you know, some kid fresh off the boat, like barely out of high school, you know, fighting for his life. And it's this really cool dying scene. And uh I went out there. It, first off, it was the craziest experience. I went out in Barstow and tried to find base camp. And there's thousands, like I, I, you'd go over these rolling hills to where, you, where we had to park and there's no information. And I'd come over to the hill and there'd be like 300 soldiers, Japanese soldiers. <laughs> they don't speak English or they weren't speaking English to me. And I was trying to figure out where I was. Dude, it took me like two hours to get to where I needed to go. And again, it was so crazy that like at base camp, there was just no information. So it was a very weird experience. Like it was Really? Yeah, it was crazy. And then they put me through like a boot camp with like a real Marine. And, you know, we're there with other actors. And some actors might look like Marines, but they have zero, you know, they're just fumbling over themselves. They don't know how to hold a gun. Or like, you know, when they're like, act like you're at war and crawl. And like, you know, there's a giant dude who looks But they went to boot camp. No, we're in like a temporary boot camp. It's just like a... You know, they like a like, like a this quick, is how you do things quickly. Yeah, or like to make it look legitimate. And then and and they asked me if I want to do it, and I was like, heck yeah! And thank God, I I can not I can look like you know I can act like I'm a, a soldier because this guy would ream other actors. Like I mean, he was just relentless, like real. And you? No, not me. He didn't. I never got in that crosshair. <laughs> thank God. But like, I mean, I saw like a, a giant man almost cry. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Was, an was, actor, you know? No, it, I mean a, an actor I met. Right. You know, but. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was intense. It was, it was, it was a, it was a wild experience. Well, and then all the stuff like day one that we shot one scene and then. Well, wait a minute, you're you're cut. missing when you worked with Clint the first time you met Clint. Yeah, I mean that was one of my first scenes again. <laughs> Did he say anything like, to you like "nice to see you"? Um, I mean he was super nice. Uh. He had a lot going on. He did. I mean, he had, so one of my favorite stories, the first time I actually met him was again, I didn't know where base camp was because it was, this thing was massive. Right. So. We're, we're, we're talking with like handlers, I guess, like, and like this Marine guy, like telling us what to do. And just, it was a, such a simple scene. My first scene, we we're just running over hill. I had no lines, nothing, just running over hill, uh, trying to escape for whatever. I don't even remember. But so we run over this hill and then there's this whole thing behind me where, uh, bombs are going off and like they, you, a couple of Marines capture a soldier or whatever. But so I'm one of the first over the hill and I, and I come over this hill and it's base game. Like, Oh, here it is. And Clint Eastwood's there. And right next to base camp is this like, it looks like wood that has been in the sea for, I mean, it's a desert. So it's just been just crazy pile of wood and he's poking a stick at it. 
And I'm like, eh, you know, I went up to introduce myself and he like, without, didn't, for, he looked at me, but then he was like, shh, this thing is crazy. And I was like, well, I didn't know what he was talking about. He's poking the wood. And I thought he was like, I was like, the wood? And then finally this crazy looking squirrel comes running out. And that was what he was doing. And that was how I met him at first. It's crazy. It's a crazy <laughs> squirrel. And, and I was just dying laughing. And I was like, this is the first time I met him. He's going to win awards for this, I bet. And the first time I met him, he's like not paying attention to what's going on at all. Now, granted, every time after that he was. And, you know, the but next I, time I, I ran over. But it's just funny. The first time I met him, it didn't even look like he was watching what was going on. He was paying attention to the squirrel. I think there's something to that. I think there's more <laughs> than just an old guy kind of poking at a squirrel. Maybe. I think, you know, these guys who are so confident with themselves can actually stop thinking about things for just a minute. Yeah. Five well, minutes. Well, like I said, it was a the scene wasn't important that part well, was regardless but i think he can just like do that yeah like just like have a conversation with somebody and yeah. not worry about it it's gonna happen you know what i mean yeah, i yeah, just yeah. Uh, that's what i gather from him it was just like it's funny last night i watched the unforgiven have you ever seen or just unforgiven ryan you've never seen unforgiven i haven't seen unforgiven no have you seen unforgiven yeah. it is one of the best movies best western i've ever seen and i've seen a lot it is incredible the acting gene hackman clint eastwood morgan freeman it's freaking powerful richard harris you gotta watch that dude you gotta watch that but yeah you worked i mean working with him i mean i just that had to be so exciting for you it was cool to check off the bucket list definitely for sure i wish i would have been able to do more or, yeah we always know, wish right but just like and i had a seven minute scene in yeah. in, in a movie and i was yeah. just like oh my god this is yeah you know in fact you know my uncle's like well it's still the best work you've done I was like 26 <laughs> or something. I was like, well, thanks. Um, but I mean, look, you've done a lot of stuff. Uh, did you ever think that, you know, you were going to be famous? I mean, did you ever, did you, did you look a, a lot of actors say, no, no, I never thought about that. I just wanted to be an actor and it's a bullshit. I wanted to be yeah. famous. I want to, but like when you were on Smallville, were you starting to work? You were like, what were you thinking? I know you said you, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I, I definitely, uh, Yes, there's a part of me that, you know, like enjoys being famous in the sense of being successful because being successful means I'm doing something right, right? That's how I feel. Um, so, I mean, yes, I I mean, from, again, from Smallville days is like really when I put it in my head of like, um, this is what I want to do and I want to be successful and, you know, obviously fame comes with that and and still to this day, I'm still chasing. I still would, I would love to be more successful than I'm happy where I, what I've done with, but trust me, we all, every actor wants wants more. We want... Uh, I mean, to, to be able to get to the point in your career where you choose the narrative or you get to choose your projects or you're writing your own stuff and it's getting greenlit instantly, that would be fantastic. Do you think you want to have a family? Maybe oh, for sure. You do. Yeah. So your parents set this this bar like, hey, this is this is great. Family is great. Yes. And it's something that you like, hey, this works and I know it works and I want to have that. Yes. So you want to have a lot of kids? Like you want to no. adopt kids like they did? I, I would love to, again... Listen, I had a plan in my head that, you know, I'm 36 now, so things kind of haven't, you know, I always thought I'd be married, like when I was younger, Me growing too. up in the Midwest, I'd be married with a kid, a white picket fan, by 30, for sure. Yeah. Um, living in LA definitely is different, you know, it's it's a tough dating scene, it's a tough everything. I mean, just living out here is rough. Um, so I would, I definitely want to adopt. I don't think I'll have, I, I won't have 15, I won't have but four. I would like to have a couple. 14. <laughs> Two, three, four, well, four no, max. Four, 14, you said you have 14 siblings. 14 siblings, yeah. So you and 14, so yeah. it'd be 15. Yeah. See, Ryan? I know, I was wrong. I was still confused. I was, cor I was still <laughs> There's confused. There's a lot of us, you know, if you can throw any number, <laughs> it doesn't is. matter. Um, do you get starstruck? I mean, no. you work with, not at all. No. Nobody, Sigourney Weaver. No. That, that's the one blessing for me. I, I've just been in and around entertainment so much. I mean, trust me, there's people where I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Like, but it's more sports stars for me. it doesn't phase you. No. Because again, once you get to meet them, like uh, they're they're just normal people. I mean, as you know, like it's you're around the glitz and glam. So like you go to war shows or whatever, like they, they really are just normal people. Um, now you respect their work. So that's the thing. Like for me, I love sports. So like if like I met Michael Jordan, or I have met Michael Jordan when I was younger. But I mean, if I met him again, it'd be more of like a you're badass. But like I don't need to. I don't I, fangirling out or and I understand it, but it's just something that it's just something you never really nah. gave a shit about. No, I mean, like, I, I want to meet. Trust me, like, there's people I want. Yeah, you want to work with. You want to work with. I respect right. them, but in terms of like the star st aspect, it's just like a. You, I'm around it in LA all 24 seven. You know, what I mean, now do you do you drink? 
Yeah, uh, yes, I'm Irish. <laughs> You're Irish. I guess. Well, <laughs> there you go. Um, did you fall into the party scene yeah. at all? Did you get involved yeah, yeah, yeah. in all the drugs and all the shit and like going, what am I doing? And then get out of that quickly. So thank again, because of my parents, uh, I was in and around that in Hollywood. Um, so not going to college, not, mm. you know, being that young. Like, I mean, I moved out here when I was right before I was 18. Um, so my college experience was live, growing, like getting a house with other actors, uh, you know, like a four bedroom house and four actors that are 18, 19 living in a house and it, you know it was crazy and you know you um, have some bad eggs that are not uh, we'll call them bad eggs but eggs that are not uh uh good influences yeah or the people they bring around you know just being in hollywood so i definitely got into trouble um the thing about me is i'm very lucky i think genetics i don't have an addictive personality so i never got caught up into anything and i've seen friends you know fall apart you know, the worst um so in that aspect i always worked really hard and then i played hard um, and I'm not an alcoholic in my life when I was younger, especially I was a problem drinker, you know, like there's no like one drink for me. It's like one, if I'm having one, I'm out all night right. um, in my twenties. Now I just too old. I can't do that anymore. And, um, but yeah, I definitely, so you've done it. Yeah. You've done it all. Did your, your parents ever have a talk with you? Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing what, what's going on? Oh, they, they, still, they still have a talk, you know, like they still know, they, they still, still worry about me. I live in Los Angeles. They know. Um, and thankfully again, you know, like it's, I, they don't have anything to worry about right now, but, uh, so you never got arrested or anything. No, I've been arrested. You have been arrested. Yeah. I was never, you know, when I was, Hey there folks, it's Michael Rosenbaum and boy, have I got a huge announcement for you. This has been a long time coming and it's finally here. I'm doing a live podcast. My podcast inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum is going live. Yeah. For the first time ever. On Wednesday, October 11th at the iconic Regent in Los Angeles. And guess what? I'm not going to be alone. Um, we're bringing a guest you might remember. He's been on the podcast. He's a friend of the show. The one, the only, Zachary Levi. We're going to catch up on life and mental health. And we're going to have a really good time with all of you. I think you know that. We're going to make it a lot of fun. We're planning a Q&A, maybe some fun games, other exclusive stuff you're only going to get by seeing it live. We're even hosting a VIP meet and greet for a small number of people before the show begins. Grab your tickets, mark your calendars, and get ready for the night of laughs, insights, and unforgettable moments. Tickets are limited, so don't miss your chance to join us on October 11th at The Regent in Los Angeles. Get your tickets now at insideofyoulive.com. This is going to be an epic night, so if you're in the area, come out and I'll see you there. I was in college, but I wasn't 21. I went to in, back home to Indiana, and we went to this place, Kipley's, and I snuck in with a fake ID, and I was sitting at a booth, and one of my friends comes over and goes, hey, the ABC's here. And ABC is like the, bar, the, yeah, yeah. the alcohol, like the police that are checking for alcohol. I don't know what, stand, what does it stand for. I should know this. I don't remember it anymore. Alcohol oh. Boys Club. I don't know. So um, I ran out the back door and hid in these bushes across the uh, parking lot near this house. And I just stayed there for about 30 minutes down. And then I finally go, nobody's chasing you. They're gone. And I got up, I started to walk out, lights came on, got cop comes out with a gun, goes, get get out, get up now, get up, put your hands up, put your hands up. I go, oh, I don't want to have anything. He's like, you know, and he comes over and my wallet, and he take get out, everything out of your pockets. And I and I dumped it and a condom was on the floor. He's like, he said something about it. I don't remember, like, oh yeah, you're gonna use that, huh? Something and uh his name I'm I'll never forget because you could ask anybody where I grew up, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> he was a tough cop in Evansville. You didn't want to mess with him. He was, the, there was no forgiveness from this guy. This guy wasn't going to go, hey, have a good night. You're speeding a little bit. Slow down, son. Never heard of that. that. No, you're getting written up and you're getting, you know, he'll do whatever it takes to make your life hell. Did you grew up in a smaller town? Small town. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was born in a small town. Uh, and they gave me minor entering a tavern under age, resisting arrest uh minor consumption and what's funny is he let me go let me go for the night to like leave he didn't arrest me but then the other cop as i'm walking to my car he goes hey buddy come here he looks at me he goes what are you doing i go i'm gonna drive home he goes you get in that car he's gonna he's gonna give you a dui he's waiting for you to get in the car don't get in the car 
And I go, okay. And I just stood outside my car door for like two hours. <laughs> and that he, even after he drove off, I waited 30 more minutes. And then I drove home late. I never forget my dad when he goes, he made me wear a suit to court. He was like, I was sitting in the passenger seat and he was just like, he was such a dick. He goes, you know how embarrassing that this is? I'm taking my son to court with all these other low lifes, you know? And we go there and he's just like, and I just, it was just awful. I hated it. It was, but that was That's my, a good parent, I think, you know? <laughs> yeah. you know? It's tough, but. Well, he could have been like, hey, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, there's different types of parenting, but for but, me, I don't. But nothing was, I'm, I'm not, look, I, I, I was an asshole, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. made a mistake. But, you know, things like that, like he didn't have any, any yeah. patience for. I go, hey, what would you do if I uh, got my ear pierced? He goes, you'd go in a halfway house. You, you wouldn't be here. And I go, okay. Meanwhile, my ear's bleeding because Candy Shepherd next door just pierced my ear. And I'm looking at him with my right ear. I go, oh, cool. I'll be at Nate's for the next week. Jesus. That's, but, I don't have tattoos. for like, My parents, same thing. They, you don't have tattoos? No, they, my parents would murder me. Really? I still, I mean, I, I, I'm I, not scared. But I, it, I'm I just bet, like a respect thing. Like I bet I, you don't say F in front of your no, I do. I do. You do? You say yeah. F-bombs? I try not to now. I mean, now, but when I was in my tw like 20s, I was like a rep, same sort of thing. Like once I was able to drink or I was a little punk where I was like, I can do, because my parents were strict. And then I had that thing where I just was rebelling against them or whatever. And my parents were still always cool with me. And um, so it was just like this dumb thing that I had in my head where, but I still, I still had, I wanted their respect. I still want their respect more than anything, um, which is why like, you know, I, I actually really like tattoos. I have a lot of friends that are covered in tattoos. I don't want to deal with it as an actor because, you know, you're in the makeup even longer. But nowadays, it's True. so easy. You could. And I think about it sometimes, but then I also think my mom would kill me. So it's just not worth it. Did your mom know when you got arrested? Your parents know? No. They never knew. They did eventually, but I tried to, you know, I did handled they like, that. Ryan. Oh, they're super disappointed. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's the same sort of thing. What your dad said. It was just drinking. It's not music, wrong. All that shit. You know, so. Yeah. Um, did you know Teen Wolf was going to be that big of a hit? Uh. Well, so I jumped on the third season. Oh, so it was already hit. So it already was a, uh, a giant hit. My, my, my story is kind of crazy, though. I knew about Teen Wolf before it ever started because I worked with um, one of the directors who's also a producer on the show on Prayers for Bobby. He directed Prayers for Bobby uh -huh. Russell. Um, and so I auditioned for season one of Teen Wolf. Um, and then I auditioned for season two where um, for a different role where I was – it was between me and, and another kid or a couple kids. But, I mean, I auditioned for that one like 17 times. I had Teen Wolf behind 17 me, like, times. a ton in front of, for just for MTV. And MTV wasn't behind me. And they had an offer out to Daniel Sharman, um, who had just come off like a really popular movie at the time, The Immortals, I think. Um, and I didn't know that. So they just like, it felt like they kept giving me different notes. Like they're like, oh, he's too edgy. He needs to be more GQ or he's got to be more nerd. So like I'd go in these auditions, like dressed completely different every time. And they'd be <laughs> like, and it was just smoke and mirrors. To tr they're waiting for Daniel to answer them. And MTV uh -huh. didn't like me. Um, so yeah, the third, the third season is when I actually got on. Did they offer it to you or you have to audition no, again? No, uh, that one was, uh, no, I, I auditioned, but it was, I was heavily favored. Really? Yeah. Finally, this guy's paid his dues. Yes. Let's like I always up. had people on Team Wolf behind me, Jeff now, and, and Russell for sure. That's good. You have to I have, got, yeah, <clears throat> you have to have cheerleaders. You yeah. have to have somebody out there that's yes. rooting for you. And that's so important in life. It's like having somebody that believes in you. Yeah. Because no, I owe them a lot. it's hard to believe in yourself. Sometimes when nobody else does. So if you have that one person, I always talk about that. You know, my, you know, I had a, a teacher that actually was patient with me. I remember Mr. Morrow, Mr. Morrow. In fact, I went back home in Indiana and uh, I said, hey, we're all going to Taroni's for some pizza. I'm taking everybody to pizza. <clears throat> Why don't you come? He goes, I'd love that. I would love to do that. <laughs> so old Mr. Morrow straight up and all my friends were like, what? Who's this dude? <laughs> I go, this is Mr. Morrow. And I, go, I don't really remember Mr. Morrow. <laughs> Some did, but like most, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was like, he was a substitute teacher. Thank God for this in this one year. And, and uh, we, we hit it off. He was just, he was just cool. But he, you know, he was, yeah. he, he didn't treat no, me like I was like stupid. Yeah, exactly. And it, it means the world when you're a kid, you know, like just someone to, that you connect with or that, you know, doesn't treat you like a child. Yeah. It means a lot when you're a kid. So you get the role and I know MTV. And a lot of these streamers, I, I, I assume Tubi is probably pretty cheap. Um, but MTV money. I remember I did a show and I mean, <laughs> uh, guys, I'm telling you, <clears throat> I got this pilot for MTV with Jackson Brown's son, Ethan, great guy, and Leslie Bibb. 
And the three of us did this show and I was paid $4,000 for the pilot. Sounds about right. And after taxes and everything was about for three, Agents four manager. weeks work. Yeah, well, yeah. And I, I, I think I had $1,400. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I know. And, and then they wanted me to do a development deal because uh, the, the pilot didn't go, but they liked me. We'll give you five grand. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, I'm rich. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> but I mean, were you like, was it? Was the same, it, same story. MTV is not. They're not known for paying well. Um, but did they start to pay you in season four and season <clears> five? <throat> I mean, or, or was it just never a thing about money with that show? They no, they were. It was tough. Always battle. Even the actors that were there from the beginning were <laughs> battling. And MTV is just not. So the cool thing, though, with MTV that we got lucky with is um, like the CW, for instance, uh, conventions, you know, like the oh, fans are so strong and so powerful that doing these conventions pays good money. Um and so that's with, where the money comes with, to get that keeps on giving. Yeah. With Teen Wolf, we could do conventions with Teen Wolf named whatever. Like we could they uh, like the arrow ones or like ones for CW. It's always like bow and arrow or like something that's not nothing to do with Teen Wolf. But it's like similar, you know, right. Whereas for, for whatever MTV didn't have any of those restrictions on us. So, you know, we, we did well in conventions if we were able to get away from work. How many um, cons did you do a year on <clears> average? Again, it depends on how much you were working. Like so if you had time to make it. Uh, sometimes some years 20 plus um, wow you know and then COVID killed it all I mean it, they're, they're starting to come back but uh, but yeah they it, it I really enjoy them it's a blast you get to interact with fans in a short you know like in, in in a short weekend you know get to get to bounce ideas off them I had a really fun experience of one of my uh, like my little arc was figuring out what my character was I was supernatural but you didn't know and Teen Wolf didn't let me know either. So I was kind of figuring it out as we go. So I actually would love going to these conventions and like bouncing ideas off. Um, some people like amazing <laughs> ideas. Some people, yeah. Oh, well, same sort of thing. But there's some of their ideas, I mean, they're <clears throat> smarter than me in, in every way. You know, they come up with things where oh, you're like, yeah. they know more. Oh. They, I feel like an idiot sometimes. They're like, well, when you have right. this, this, the key, it's, I'm like, I, and Tom and I are like, I have no clue what you're They'll talking about. They'll come up with things in the script that what, what they've come up with makes perfect sense. But you're like, I don't think the writers. Or that's more maybe I don't you know like the time of your watch and, and, and you're like I don't think it I mean that's amazing that you came up with that but I don't maybe yeah. I gotta ask that and then you go ask and they're like no we didn't do <laughs> you oh, know like the, they're so smart and they pick up on everything so for me I had a blast and then some of their story and things that they would come up with was fascinating and then it and then I would be like kind of repeat some of that and try to sound smart you'd be like yeah well I think uh <laughs> here's you know, my idea yeah. because I met <laughs> well I'd be like no I bounce these ideas off with Bubba, you know yeah but uh but yeah no I I, I loved it it was actually a lot of fun it was yeah. one of the coolest things ever that I because most you most of the time you know what everything about your character you get a script you know everything and you can't tell anyone and at first i hated it because i was like this is so i want to know like what if i'm playing it wrong what if like i'm doing this this and this and all of a sudden they tell me i'm like this and that doesn't make sense at all yeah so it bothered me for a little bit but then i was like no i'm just gonna have fun with this like the writers aren't gonna do me wrong like they're gonna they'll let me know when it you know and how i've been playing it is kind of i would assume how they're gonna write it so then i just when i just started when i stopped caring about that and had fun with it my most enjoyable time was with fans bouncing ideas being like i dude i don't know like i think because you know it was just, it was a it was a lot of fun do you remember the first time you went to a con and were you blown away by how many people were there to see you were you like is it there was gonna be, is there gonna be anybody there do they it, care again i i knew because Team Wolf was already established and and they've already, I'd already seen conventions. Like I knew what to expect. But I mean, yes, your first time. I mean, the craziest thing is, especially like overseas, like Paris or France for whatever reason, like kids, I don't know what it is, but there'll be like 500 kids at two in the morning at your hotel out front. Are you serious? Yeah, that part's, that part's intense where you're just like, you know, you can't sleep. Or the airport, you deal with a lot of at the airport. Sometimes they're pretty good at trying to, I mean, every once in a while something gets leaked somehow or, and then you show up and there's somehow you're like, whoa, how'd they figure that out? Mm -hmm. Um so a lot of times it's it's normally an actor doing something dumb like posting, you know, like a ticket. Like look where I'm flying. It has to do with the time. So they're why like, would they're, they, why? but people do that or like you know like first time act. Like one thing that like I definitely remember <laughs> getting like the talk. Like all right, right like one of my first conventions, uh, like big ones. Uh, they're like don't post the hotel. Like don't even post a picture because then they'll figure it out. Or don't even post for across the street because they the fans will figure it out. And sure enough, like some someone will accidentally slip something and then next thing you know they, they figure out where you are all because of they could see like they're investigators it's oh, insane. that's the yeah. wallpaper yeah. from the uh yeah. and the hilton over in on yep. Curd street yeah yep. they'll figure it out they do figure it out yeah that was that's weird i used to i finally used an alias um it's a kid who picked on me in high school so i used his name <laughs> no but um yeah and it's funny because i go back to vancouver every once in a while to work and the last time i went i was with my brother and uh i walked into the lobby 
of the Sutton place. Sutton. And I'll make up a name, but the the head guy goes, good evening, Mr. Johnson, or whatever. And I go, and my brother goes, and, my, and the name is such a funny thing because I used to always talk about this guy picking on me when I was kids. So my brother, when he heard that, he was like, oh, and it was some a name that's kind of yeah, fun, yeah, sounds yeah. funny. Yeah. I won't say it because obviously yeah, yeah, that yeah. I don't have an alias name. That'd be stupid, Ryan. I think that wouldn't be smart. Um, yeah. Cons are incredibly. There's one thing I will say because I told Michelle, my friend Michelle, uh, her and Chris, they just they lost their their boy Preston, who was a good buddy of mine. He was 16 to a horrible cancer. And I, you know, he was Ronald, you know, went to the Ronald McDonald house and they helped him and he went through I don't know how many surgeries. I sat with this kid through chemo, visited him in the hospital. I FaceTimed with all my superhero friends like Zach Levi and Welling and all these guys and great kid. I used to drive up to him to see him and his family. And we watched, in fact, his favorite show was Teen Wolf. And if he knew I was talking to you right now, I wish he, I wish he would go crazy. In fact, his mom, we were texting and she was like, Oh my God. And she's like, it's hard for me to even watch that show because, and, and when it ended, Preston was so upset. He was so upset. And downstairs here, I go, well, what's your favorite show? And he goes, Teen Wolf. And I go, Teen Wolf? Really? I hadn't seen Teen Wolf. And he goes, yeah, can we watch it? And I go, yeah, let's watch Teen Wolf. And we ended up watching like three episodes of the first season. And I was like, this is fun. This is kind of fun. And he knew that he knew like some of the lines. And But it's amazing what I felt like when I go to these cons you know, for Smallville or anything I've done when, when you could see like, Hey, this was a mo this was yeah. something my dad and I had on Tuesday yeah. nights, or this is, and it means so much to people. And you don't realize you're like, that's just a show. How could this mean something? And so how does that make you feel? How do you, how do you deal with that stuff? Uh, I mean, you feel awesome, especially like I was, I hope in my life I get to do more, but like you mentioned a, a film I did with Sigourney called prayers for Bobby. Now that movie is based on a true story about a young boy, Bobby Griffith, who, who, sadly kills himself um, because he's gay. You know, it's, it's, his family doesn't accept him. And, you know, like so many families who are uber religious and think that that's wrong uh, would just chalk it up as, you know, the devil got a hold of him or, you know, hopefully, you know, well, Mary Griffith did a 180 and realized she's the one who killed her son, not, you know, not her, you know, she pushed her son to death. Right. Uh, and instead of continuing that style she does a complete 180 and you know to this day she was one of the leading activists for uh lgbtq plus rights and wow she, i mean it's just the story in itself is is mind-boggling and talking to her about her son and and her interactions and that stuff is is also you're like it the amount of respect i have for her to openly talk about that you know be like you're telling me you killed your son and she's like I, you know it's the worst you know, the hardest thing i've ever done in my life is to, uh, admit, is to that. admit that and and realize Gosh. that i did that you know and then she's like now from here on out i'm trying to correct that and it's a powerful it's a powerful message so a movie like that like trust me i would i would meet people all the time and i still meet them all the time who write me letters and and be like you know you've changed the way my parents talk to me or like you meet like a, a giant must be military man giant burly man comes up to you and you're like what's this guy he'll come up and shake my hand and be like I, I look at my son differently because of you. And you're like, what? It's, it's, wow. it's, it's, it's it, and, you, and again, you have that stuff, same thing with Team Wolf stuff. But for me, with Team Wolf, you know, it's the same sort of thing where you're like, it's just a TV show about werewolves, but it does affect people's lives. Or if you're going through a bad time and, you know, you're, you're, you're struggling to get out of bed, you find joy in a show that, that, you know, brings you laughter or, enjoy, you know, keep, keeps you waking up the next day. And just to get you out of that funk, you know, it, it means a lot to people. And, that, and that's the thing where you're like, wow, this is bigger than just me acting and uh and it's cool and that's the stuff that really i enjoy that aspect i love when people tell me things like that and same sort of thing i've had experiences where uh you know i met a girl who who she's passed away since but uh teen wolf was her favorite thing and she was girl who was dying of cancer she was young and she and again I, I was terrified i had to go like in like a hazmat suit to even talk with her uh i went there with some of the cast and i was terrified i was like i don't know if i can handle this like i'm not good with death i don't want to see a kid mm -hmm. that's you know that only has a week left to live. Like what, how am I supposed to be strong for this child? And then going in there was like one of the most powerful things I've ever experienced because she was stronger than any one of us, you know, that, and like she would crack jokes about her dying with her parents. You'd be like, well, I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about my parents, you know, like just you know, her, her, her energy was insane. And so to do things like that is pretty cool. Yeah. I would go to the Ronald McDonald house a lot and I would have to walk out and go to the bathroom and get, you know, my composure yeah, yeah. because <clears throat> 
I would just feel it coming in. I'd go in there and I would just like break down mm -hmm. for like five minutes and then kind of get it together because it was just, I mean, there's nothing worse than a, a child suffering. Yes. It's, there just isn't. I, yeah. I can't, I can't imagine anything worse than that. You know, it's like, you know, sometimes it takes looking at someone and going, wow, you're never going to have a life. You're never going to yeah. meet a girl and have a, you know, maybe a, a, a guy have a family and travel and, and just nothing. I mean, you're going to everything so premature. The, the strain like, financially that it puts on the parent, like every, you see, they're just barely holding on. It's tough. It's, it's, and it's weird. everywhere. I'm going to cry right now thinking about yeah. it. It's terrible. Seriously. Yeah. yeah, I could too. It's like, it's, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, I it's just, awesome. Yeah, Doing no, that it's, is it, it, it is. It's a good thing. I mean, yeah, we're lucky. I always say that we're lucky that we can do things. We make we can make money doing things we love, and and, and people, you know, support them. And, yeah. Um, do you uh, even to this day now? You're 36 years old. Are you got a girlfriend? Mm -hmm. How long? Uh, a little over a year. Yeah. Yeah. You thinking maybe? Uh, you haven't gotten there. Not, I mean, it's always in the back at my age it's always in your head you know so it's so you know I'm not dating to just date anymore you know so so yes she's uh, incredibly important to me and timing is that you know it's there's things that she has going on in her life and my you know I'm a big believer and there's no rush so even though a year a year is like still like yeah, let's figure it out. Yeah, no, you, you find know, like out things, if the person's crazy yeah. after six months or. We a don't. Year. I, another thing that I'm hugely, you know, like imp, I think is incredibly important. It was like no, no, with my family when I was younger, uh, living with someone before they're married. I think it's like you I have to. I, you have to. Yes, you have so, to. That's the next step. For my us. friends are always worried that I know you're going to just meet someone and get married. I go, no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to live with them. Yeah. And if they could live with me, and I could live with them, yeah, that's yeah. I've never had that. Can you believe it? I'm 50. I've never lived with a girl. Well, I lived with this woman for five months, but we lived with her parents. That was kind of weird. How old were you? 20, almost mid 20s. Yeah. I know people do that. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> now it would be weird if you did that. What? If, if he moved into some girl's parents' house, I think that would uh, be Yeah, a 50-year-old man living with, you know. <laughs> like, wait, um, it's, it's such a crazy world dating. Yeah. Do you, were you ever on the dating apps? Oh, yeah. You, you are. have to. You have to. I mean, it's as much as I hate that, the whole concept of, listen, if you're if you're out there dating and you're like, I, here's the perfect example. I went out when I was, I went through a heartbreak. And so I went out to, out, out, I was out mingling like, oh, I'm, I'm going to try. And I saw this girl who I thought was beautiful. And I know, again, I have nine sisters. I, I just know, I knew it was girls night. I know I'm going to get shut down by her friends, even if I can make it to her. But the thing, and I was like, maybe Ryan, maybe you're just being, just do it. Just who cares? Come on, What's Ryan. the worst that could happen? Come so on, I go Ryan. and trust me, her friends try to shut me down and I get to her and she's friendly, but want nothing to do with me. And I shit you not the next day or not the next day, but like at least a couple days later, she matched. I saw her on a dating app and I was like, no way. And so I, you know, didn't expect anything of it. Anyways, she matched and I joked around with her and I was like, hey, you know, like, just so you know, I met you the other, and she's like, what? And you turned me down. Yeah, and, I, and she was like, oh, that was girls night. I don't even remember, you know, like, it's, it's girls and, are already and talking. Her? No, no, this is a different, oh, okay, no, this, okay. is, this is years right. ago. That would have been a really nice but, story. But it's that that thing where it, girls are already talking to guys on dating apps already. So if you meet them out in person, you're already behind the curve, you know? And like, how do you, like, you never go to, the thing that I miss is, I, I just got to experience this when I was younger. Going to a bar, and, and if your friends didn't show up, you stayed there and mingled with other people and you met other friends. Now I'll never go to a bar that my friends are at because they text you immediately. You know, they're like, hey, change of plans. We're going to Rock and Riley's or change of plans. We're, you know, right. so you never you never do that thing. We're like, where's Tom? I don't know. Call him. And you leave like so the concept of like different people pockets don't mix as much. It's so it's, it's the same not thing as girls. organic. Yeah. It's like and even when you get on those dating apps, I don't know how many times I'm like, oh, she seems she really has a career. She's, uh, you know, she's pretty. I Click. Oh, I matched with her. This is great. And then I'll, you know, should I wait a day? I don't want to be desperate here. And then I'll uh, say, say something funny. You know, hey, uh, crickets. Yeah. And then either crickets and five days go by, and I go, hey, just uh, saying, hey, one more time. Hope you're well. Nothing. I delete it. Delete it. Like, yeah. What was that? Or sometimes they'll say, hey, what's up? And I go, hey, how are you there? You know, and. A few, two things and then they're gone yeah. or it's just so and i don't want to um meet someone 
on a dating app and then they're like, all right, let's get dinner. Now it's three hours with somebody. I haven't met you yet. So I would like to FaceTime you. Let's see if we have a rapport or meet for lunch. Okay. You know, lunch is an hour. Yeah. Nobody has an, a longer than an hour lunch. Coffee's it's LA. A good one. Coffee. And that's it, man. Yeah. And and you know, ninety percent of those don't end up going past coffee. No. Or lunch. Well, nine I mean And I always feel bad. I'm like I'm you know, I have a good time and I, I inadvertently sometimes you know, I don't say like, I like you, or I just say, oh, great. I'm interested. And because I want to be interested in someone. And then I go and they're like, Hey, how are you? What's going on? Well, it's just the worst. You mean also, I, I, I swear I've met girls where their roommate texts for them because they're hilarious. They're sharp. They're witty. And then, you, <laughs> and then you go get coffee with them and you're like, mm, what, what happened? happened to what? Where's the jokes? Where's the sarcasm? What yeah. Happened? Where's all witty are you nervous or, you know, but it's not. And they're just, it's so it's just the dating apps are the worst. And 99% of them never even make it to coffee because they just ghost you or they disappear or they're talking to someone else. Or again, also like, I also have an ego too. So like if someone doesn't respond to me too long, I'm like, well, fuck you. You know, and like, and then, which maybe they're busy. Like maybe they actually have something going on. That's like, what my friends my, always say. Yeah. I'm like, well, fuck, like I'm important too. Like, yeah. You get, you feel like kind of like insulted. Yeah. Like, you know what? What's wrong with me? Yeah. What did or, I do? What did I say? Or if a girl cancels for whatever reason, like, again, it could be a perfect example. I've canceled in my life. Like things happen. But in my head, I'm like, nope, I'm worth, I'm valuable. You know, and you're like, and that could be a perfect potential person that yeah, you're just blowing that's up. That's your, pro- your fault. Yeah. That's but, your problem. That's yeah. my problem. But as I get older, it gets harder and harder. You know, like getting, when I was younger, I was way more conducive towards putting up with and molding around someone's issues. Now I'm like, nope. <laughs> red flag, red flag, red flag. See, that's, but, but the older you get and the <laughs> longer know, you harder. wait for someone, the more red, the red flags that were just like, like, I don't know, what's uh what's a very light, I didn't have red flags in my twenties, but I'm colorblind. What's a light red that you can't really make it? It's not strong red. Maybe a, maybe a pink, no, a whitish pink. No, maybe like a uh, <laughs> like a vermilion. Okay, call it a vermilion. <laughs> it's just like you know, the, all these all these flags are everywhere, and it's like you got to just think about what can I deal with. And my friend once said, "Listen, you have a great life, single life. You do a lot of you have great friends. You have a lot." fun going obviously i want to be in a perp in a relationship and you know have somebody to travel with and be there for me and stuff and um but he's like i just want you to know coming from someone who has 23 years with someone my friend tom he goes just know this when you're in a relationship with someone their problems are now your Mm -hmm. problems so you have your problems but you also have their problems and I was like, oh, fuck. I don't even have time to deal with my problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to deal with my problems. Now I got to deal with their problems. But it's true. You have to sort of. Yeah, it's a give and take. Yeah. And again, I swear to God, I mean, I'm, I've experienced it, but dating in LA is the hardest in the world. There is no, it's the worst. It is. It's and People, again, my friends in Indiana, are always like, oh, yeah, no, you went out with Nicole nothing. Kidman? I'm like, yeah, I went out with Nicole Kidman. <laughs> yeah, because she's, <laughs> I have her number. It's, you should totally <laughs> date her. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> but it's like, they don't, they don't realize, you know, but in Indiana, the converse <laughs> is everybody's married. Yeah. Everybody has kids. That's what you do. There's no single people yes. over 20 in Indiana. That's well, just everyone's career driven here. Or they've got their goals and, and the first sign of a speed bump, they're already swiping on the next person, you know, like that's it's true. How do, you, how do you deal with uh, mental health? How do you deal with like uh, being motivated, being um, not being anxious, being down on yourself, being uh, do you deal with be ever dep- depression at all? Yeah. I mean, I, th- thankfully, I've been blessed. I don't I, I don't want to call it real depression, you know, because some people struggle with some stuff that I could never understand. Um, but I definitely get I mean, human nature to get down on yourself. Um for me, I get in low periods of my life when I don't have purpose. So something I struggle with in my 20s a lot, you know, when, yeah, acting is, I did a movie with uh, Armin Bueller Stahl um, when, called, uh, my brain's not working right now. Um, oh, I should know this. Uh, Dust Factory. There we go. It came to me. Uh, and, and when I was a kid, he told me, you know, to be a successful act- actor, you need hobbies. I didn't know what the heck he was talking about in my head. I was yeah. like, that's weird. He was a painter, a musician. He did everything. Um, <clears throat> and I was just like, as a kid, I was like, that made no sense. And it wasn't until like my 30s where I was like, oh. In my 20s, I'll go crazy. Like when I'm working, I'm happy as a clam. You know, I'm so, everything's awesome. And it's those down times where I, that's when I get into trouble or if I, you know, like I don't have things to do or you start, you know, like you get lonely or whatever. So, so having purpose, keeping myself busy, you know, like even just going to the gym in the morning helps me keep my mind 
moving for for a reason it's those times where like you know like say if you just did you just got off a series or a film you know and you have like two months off it's it's easy to just be like i'm just gonna relax and for those two months i would my it would mess with me mentally oh yeah rather than you know you'd think like oh I'm you just spiral. taking a break yeah I'm, I'm i'm that's good for my health i'm taking a break no i need to have things to do to to make it so like you know because the average person they have a nine to five and you know they just they just keep going through it for me I'm, I'm meant for that not nine to five but like staying busy because when i have downtime that's when i get into trouble that's when i do stupid things that's when i i just do dumb things when i have too much free time and i get down on myself the most dangerous word in the dictionary sedentary <laughs> that's what when i'm just not doing anything just sitting there i think everything's fine i could watch a movie and then the yeah. movie's over and then i'm thinking what am i doing I put on another movie and I'm thinking, and I go upstairs. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's it's like you know, some people need to be busy. Yes. I think everyone needs to have a little passions. Bit, yeah, yeah. And you know, I, I said it millions of times, but you don't have to, you know, be a, a a movie star. You don't have to be a millionaire to be happy or have right. passions. Everyone loves something. Everyone loves doing something. Besides watching TV and like, you know, going out for a hike or, you know, going to play softball with friends or learning guitar or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Hobbies. Hobbies. Like he said, it's so, it's so true. Like I have, that's the thing. I have a lot of ho hobbies, you know, a lot. And that's, thank God for those. Thank God for still <clears throat> playing some sports and still playing guitar and music and all this stuff because of those lulls can get they get you, know, you yeah especially when you're young and you're you're always like you're always working and going to this and hey we're going to this party and hey we're going here and hey you're going to toronto and you're gonna shoot this and you're gonna and then all of a sudden everything stops and you're like who am i what the f what am i doing here and it's just it's scary all right this is called shit talking with ryan kelly <laughs> these are my top tiers okay. rapid fire perfect this is uh go to uh inside of you uh, patreon.com slash inside of you patrons save the show they really uh support the show and if you want to become a patron do it it's a lot of fun all right <clears throat> miss kayla sue what was the biggest blessing and biggest challenge of, of being one of 15 kids the biggest blessing and the biggest challenge biggest blessing is i can handle any personality that ever exists you know like i'm <laughs> such a people person you can't good answer. there's not a person out there that like you know like i might not I, I can make i'm such a people person I, you can put me in a room and i'm i can i can make it happen i might not enjoy them as much as but like i'm not the type of person who gets freaks out it's like it. uh, you know i can handle anyone uh biggest, the biggest uh, challenge, challenge? Knowing, uh, the, knowing their birthdays <laughs> yeah right um the biggest challenge you don't have to answer. i mean I get, I'm, I'm just trying to think like i never knew anything different getting so, lost in the mix maybe but i never felt like i was lost we were I, I, I'm, that's a really good question. I don't, I've never had it worded like that. So where I'm like, mm, what was it? I mean, I, I just, uh, traveling. <laughs> well, yeah, but again, oh I didn't gosh. know we didn't, we didn't travel. So like th those things sound what so about favorites, jealousy, probably. I'm sure I, you know, I was my mom's favorite. My, all, you so were, <laughs> well, I traveled with my mom. A were lot. you the youngest? No, I'm middle, but, middle. I, but I, but my siblings always make fun of me saying I was my mom's favorite. And it's just cause I spent the most time with her because of acting, because right. I needed a guardian. So my mom and I got really close. So I'm for sure a mama's boy. Did they put all that money in, in a trust fund or whatever for you, or did you have to give some to them? Oh, I definitely had to. I mean, it wasn't to that to the family, you know, like coming out to Los Angeles, you know, the Oakwood apartments. We, that was expensive. Renting a car for three months out of the year to make it there for policy season. That that stuff was that money was never mine. I never thought of it. It was my family. Like, we, it was a thing that they helped me get to where I am today. So I right. got some money, but sure. some of it was gone. You know, put towards things that my family needed. That makes so. perfect sense. Um, all right, Michelle K. As a Chicago native, deep dish or regular pizza? Deep dish all day. I love deep dish. Yeah, I mean, I'll say. I mean, even bad pizza, I'll eat. I love pizza, pizza. But Ryan, there's a good deep dish place out here. There's uh, not. There's not. There's just say good, it. Uh, it's on Melrose. Say it. Oh fuck, I don't remember its name. It's not. Oh, all right. Just, there used to be Taste Chicago. <laughs> I mean, that was terrible. Remember that spot in Burbank? It was from uh, that. Act, um, I should know this. I don't like the pizza here either. It's terrible. I mean, it's not. You know, again, my, I can eat shitty pizza, so I'll still eat my it. My buddy but nothing owns like Chicago. Prince Street Pizza, and he says it's great. Uh, my friend Larry Lawrence. Well, they got the pe the pepperoni cups, those things. There? Yeah, isn't that what they do? Isn't that their thing? I don't know. I haven't been, but I'm, uh, I got to check it out. Prince I Pizza. Check that out then. I'm, I'm Prince Street Pizza. Listen, again, bad pizza is still good to me. <laughs> you haven't tried it's Prince not Street. Like, no, I haven't. All right, got to try it. it. Lalani, and when you were on Smallville, did you have any techniques or tricks that help you act out those emotional scenes with Clark? What were you thinking about? Uh, 
I always think of, in, it, it changes every time I have to cry, but I think of like a terrible situation. So like, um, like I picture something awful, like your mom gets hit by, I mean, this is gonna be terrible, but your mom gets hit by a car, she's pinned between a car, and you're the only, like mom, the only sibling that gets, arrives at the scene and the cop's like, hey, she's coherent but you have two minutes to talk to your mom before she's gone. And then you're just whiffed away. And, and like what I would you say, do that. what I would say to my mom and then just thinking like that, you know, just it was like, Poof. and then I can't use that again because it doesn't work because I use that. So I have to think of other. And then I, it sometimes it takes me a little bit to figure out what that one is. And once I find it, then I'm like honing on that and I can do that. But it's weird every time it's something completely different. And then the thing that worked me for the last time doesn't trigger this thing. Cause I'm like, ah, I did that. Right. I, I hear you. Jessica B, tell us how you felt when they announced they were doing the Teen Wolf movie. Shocked. I couldn't. I was like, what? You know, was, we went from doing a, if anything, I expected another season. And then when that didn't happen, you know, it was kind of just like, it was a That's chapter it. of my, yeah. And it was awesome. And we, yes, we want a little bit more. But at the same time, sometimes, you know, writing off with wanting more is always better than, you know, to where something go, is just bad and yeah. just, like just beating a dead horse. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I wasn't, I was content. So when they did the films, I was like, what? That's cool. Well, you already said this, so you don't have to answer, but Ruby M, we answered this in the interview, just saw Prayers for Bobby, what a great movie, what has the impact on you after you worked on Prayers for Bobby, yeah, but yeah. you already told yeah, me, so there you have powerful. that, Ruby, I just wanted I to say it. your name, Ruby. Uh, Jam and Jenny, you've been performing since you were a kid, do you have any particular mentors along your way, which ones, who? Everyone I work with, I mean, even like even working with you guys, I told you, you guys truly impacted my life, so when you when I got the email from you, I was like, what, this is, this is crazy, because you guys changed my life into where I was like, I specifically remember, and, and you guys were also all very nice. So that was another thing. Like if you guys were assholes, which I've been on sets where people are, I probably would have maybe gone a different route, but because you guys were so friendly, um, and then on top of that, it's, I, I seemed to see the joy that you guys had. I was like, I wanna be like that. <laughs> ah. I like it. Um, you work with Shatner? Uh, I did. Boston Legal? <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, not as much, he was like, I never got to directly work with him. He was in a scene. No, he wasn't in any of it. He was around, but no, I didn't get Did to. Did you ever talk to him? Uh, I had a conversation with him for like 30 minutes and he was super, it was again, it was about my family and he was just making fun of me. 15 kids? Yeah, he was. How did you do that? Yeah, that was exactly, that <laughs> what, was it. Were you, were you um, uh, <laughs> upset a lot of the time? Because a lot of kids. Yeah, I've talked to him too. And then the next time we see him, he's like, I don't know, I don't know you. Yeah. What is this? Um, this has been a real treat. It's been a real treat seeing you grow up to be such a great guy. And I know you're going to get married some sometime. You're going to have kids. I love that you had a good family. I love that uh, it seems so chaotic, but it really just worked for you. Yeah. Which it's so important to, to love your kids, you know. And if you show them that and you pay attention to them and you, you're there for them. It's important. It, it makes their transition transition into, into adulthood easier yes um when you don't have that sort of um what's the the uh support yeah it's uh, building blocks you know like yeah that... yeah that's cool biggest audition that you almost got that you didn't get biggest movie Ooh. uh i don't know if i almost got it but i've gotten far on stuff that like i got way too excited like again something that crushed me is the the andrew garfield spider-man you know i had a couple auditions for that and that was like my childhood dream like being spider-man so i don't think i was anywhere near how many auditions four you were near yeah so you were near but um yeah that was that would have been cool oh man that was that one was where he I, was I tried to i tried he was to terrible no he wasn't he was I, I, tr I tried to not not get upset at that one, but that one, you know, I, I cried in my pillow at night for three years. I still do, actually. <laughs> I still cry. <laughs> oh, I still man. think about it. Yeah. All right, dude. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's good seeing you. Good seeing you. Nice guy. Yeah. Really, just, um, it was easy. It was easy. I like when it's easy. Although sometimes when it's hard, it's like kind of forces <laughs> you to kind of be a little malleable, a little <laughs> maneuverable, a little... Um, so, uh, but I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed Ryan. It was fun. Um, all the stuff we said in the intro, if you didn't listen to it, uh, it's all there. So you could listen to it there. Um, follow the podcast at Inside You Podcast at Insi on uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook at Inside You Pod on Twitter. And uh, I'm on Cameo and uh, uh, Patreon.com slash Inside if you want to get back to the, the podcast. And I'll send you a message after if you want to join and uh, give back. Uh, what else? Um, inside of you online store, all that stuff. Tom and I will be on the road. Um, 
where are we going? We're going to uh, freaking D.C. and Rhode Island and Nashville and, uh, you know, the list goes on. So get tickets to come see us at a con. You can go to my Instagram uh, at the Michael Rosenbaum, and it's on the link tree and all the things we're doing, including Cameo and all that stuff. So you could uh, come visit us and we could hug it out. Um, right now, I think it's time for the top tier shout outs. I think so. You think so, Ryan? I agree. I think we should do this? Probably. All right, we're going to do this. This is the top tier uh, patrons. Um, if you want to become a member, uh, I'll send you a message back, but uh, you get your name shouted out if you join the top tiers and lots of other perks and we're adding perks as we speak so thank you for being a patron if you're a patron i love you i love you thank you top tier patrons here they are and they've been here for a while nancy d leah and Kristen, little lisa yukiko jill e brian h nico p robert b jason w dream weaver i mean a lot of these names have been here just for so long and it baffles me because I have abandonment issues. <laughs> and I always assume that one day I'm going to look on here and no one's going to be here. And I know people have families and lives. and But uh, it's, just, uh, it's just awesome. And it means so much to me. So thank you. Uh, Nico P, Brian H, I said, Sophie M, Raj C, Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, L Don Supremo, 99 more, San Diego M, Chad W, Leanne P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Dave Hall. Hello, Dave. I miss you, Dave Hall. Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, Tabitha T, Tom N. By the way, I'm having a top tier Zoom coming up. So check the uh, Patreon page. Talia M. Tom N, Betsy D, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K. Want to read a couple? Yeah. Let's do it. Who's next? Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D, Joey M, Eugene and Leah, Corey, Angela F, Mel S, Christine S, Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M, Amanda R, and Jen B. Kevin E, Stephanie K, Jor L, Jam and J, Leanne J, Luna R, Mike F, Stonehenge, Stone H, D. Wild Moon Child, Brian L, Kendall L, Kara C, Jessica B, Kyle F, Marisol P, Kaylee J, Brian A, Ashley F, Marion Louise L. Romeo the Band, Veronica Q, Frank B, Jen T, Nikki L, April R, Derek N. JDW, Calm Bomb, Rosen Bomb, Ginger Insomnia. Rachel D and Lorelai L. I just scratched my nose. I didn't pick it. Now I picked it. Okay, great. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, couldn't do it without you. I hope you enjoyed the podcast today and keep listening. Spread the word. And um, don't forget, October 11th, Wednesday, Regent Theater, 7 p.m., Inside of You Live podcast with Zach Levi. Get your tickets, Ticketmaster, on my Instagram link tree get tickets come see me it's going to be a packed house i hope right now we're doing pretty well we'll see ryan will be there mm -hmm. so we'll see you soon from michael rosemont i'm here in the hollywood hills of california uh i'm ryan taylor's here in the hollywood hills of california as well a little wave do we like our uh, new, oh, our uh, new camera angle. wide shot yeah. like camera angle uh, i dig it i think it's intimate yeah all right um thank you so much for being here be good to yourself i'll see you next week mm -hmm.